So let's talk about it. All right. So Ready Player One, They Live, which I have the code on this website as well. But these movies, They Live, Ready Player One, The Matrix, they are all literally telling you the realm that we live in. Okay. So for example, in Ready Player One, the Oasis represents what we like, what we call reality right now. All right. And then when they was outside of the Oasis, that represents the astral realms, which is our, we got our real bodies. Because remember in the Oasis, they had they, they game bodies. It was a video game. And they had to the, into the Oasis, right? And in the Oasis, they could be whatever they wanted to be, right? Live whatever life they wanted to live. And, and they all had their own avatars, right? And in, in the Oasis, you could keep coming back. If you die in the Oasis, you don't die in real life. You just lose your all the all the things you've saved up for your your avatar or your player. The reason this movie deep is because most people don't look at this life as a simulation, like a video game. And Ready Player One exposes that this what this is. This is a computer simulation. That's why the Matrix is all about computer programs. The Sentinels were programs. All right. Now the main boss that the uh, the company that wanted to control the Oasis. You know, they represent the fallen angels in the astral realms, Satan and the fallen angels in the astral realms. You get what I'm saying? In the way that these beings want to control this reality. All right. Now, when this reality was originally created, it was created for us as a spiritual dojo and as a place where you are supposed to experience and continue to build up. Notice, same thing in Oasis. It was actually a, a, a it was created by the original creator to be fun, to be a place you can go and be whatever you want to be, dream up whatever you want to dream up, create whatever you want to create. That was the whole idea of the Oasis, all right, originally. But then once the the, the original creator was removed, right, his understudy took over, all right? So that understudy will represent like Zeus, Satan, because when we descended down to this realm, all right, it was like the Oasis, right? Uh, 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 an alternate reality for us, because our home planet, our headquarters, is Xylanthia. We, we, we all have our real bodies back home on Xylanthia, and then we have uh, other avatars spread out on other galaxies and, and in other dimensions and on other planes as well. But our original bodies, astral bodies, is back home on Xylanthia. This is what they were showing in the Matrix too. Like, remember, they had their real bodies in Zion, but they had to hop in the seat and plug into the Matrix. So that's no different than the, on the Oasis. They had to go into the video game, put the goggles on to plug into the Oasis. Now, in this reality, it's the same exact way. This is just a video game. It's a simulation, literally. And you control your player or your avatar. And if something happened to your avatar, you wouldn't die because the real you is in the astral realm anyway. The spirit and soul is your connections that keep you linked to the astral realm. So you would never, what they call, die in this oasis, right? But you would start over and have to start from scratch if you either choose to come back or are sent back or you went to the moon was like, all right? So notice that in the oasis, in the video, in the video game, they showed you so, look, they showed you so much in this movie. Like, they showed you the Akashic Records. The Akashic Records is what he had the access to get clues about the oasis, okay? So that's no different than going deep within in the meditation. If you are aware of the Akashic Records, they exist inside of us, the carbonated beings, as well as within the, the realm, the flenum of the planet, which is the like the realm in between our realm and the next realm, which would be Asgard. But the flenum of the planet is exactly what um, what a Akashic Record sits in the physical. But you also can access access these Akashic Records from with, from deep within you. So. The Akashic Records is a holographic library where every action that has ever been committed on, in this reality, it, is, it you can go back and watch it in the Akashic Records. So it also is, is every action that has taken place as well as every thought. So I just actions that actually took place. So when people think about things and they don't even if they even when they don't manifest because they haven't put enough intent behind it, those thoughts all are in the Akashic Records. Is basically an energetic holographic library of all the energy that has ever been sent out on the planet. And whoever sent the energy out is etched onto your soul. Remember, each soul has a number. All right. So this is how the Akashic Records work. Everything that ever happened is in the Akashic Records. So this is exactly why 
if you pay attention, right, you'll see that in this movie, he kept going to the Akashic Records to to, to plug in and try to figure out like cl clues about that reality so that he could win the game. Okay, like if you go into the Akashic Records within you, you're gonna get clues because you can see literally everything that's ever took place, what they call past, present or future, you can see them in the Akashi Records. It's a holographic library, an energetic library. Every thought or action that has ever took place in this reality, all right? Now, his whole goal was to win the game, right? Why did he want to win the game? Because he wanted to take control of the Oasis so that, people, so that they can run it on a high vibration so that people wouldn't be forced to do things they didn't want to do. They can enjoy it the right way. Okay, that's the whole goal of us in this game. When we come here, we descend here right into this reality, especially us Indigo children, all of those born after the 1950s. That's the goal. Our goal is to win the game here, to rise in frequency and get the planet back. That would be our version of winning the game. Why? Because once we get this planet back and, and, and get these invaders off our planet or out this reality, right, then we have complete control back over the planet and we can set the balance back right. So he only wanted to win the game and set the balance back right, you know. So notice, like, the first board he won. And it was three keys he needed. Notice three, right? He needed certain keys, right, that he would need at the end, right? Notice how the very first key he won, he went against the, the Oasis. So they was racing, right? And everybody had been racing for years and years and years. Nobody had beat this, beat this level yet, right? Nobody had beat this version of the system in Oasis. Every time they got far, the goddamn got, um, King Kong would come out and, and destroy them, right? That's exactly what would happen. Every time they got far, King Kong would come out and destroy them, okay? But what you, you got to realize is this, though. King Kong would come out to destroy them, yes. But what did he do to get the key? He, was, he went to the Akashi Records. That's a form of, of that's a actually form of, like, he meditated and went deeper within himself, right? He went to the Akashi Records. They're not calling it that in the movie, but I'm telling you that's what it is. He went to the Akashi Records or the library with the little robot with the suit he was watching the, the the past events right of the owner talking with the other the other human being and then he said he wanted to keep it fun and go backwards that was a hint to him so what did he do when the race started that time he went backwards he drove backwards and when he and it wasn't nothing but a wall behind him so keep in mind he didn't know what was gonna happen he literally had to take the risk he risked his whole avatar because if, if, if he was wrong he would have smacked the wall Lost his avatar, lost all his coins, and would have had to start over with a whole new player in the game, right? And nobody wanted to do that. That's why they kept emphasizing, don't lose all your shit, right? Okay, so he took the risk. He went back. What happened when he went against the, the wall opened up? He go around the board, get the first key, right? That's an example of why we got to go against the grain, against the system. He went against the rules of the system because, remember, they was already running it through computer, through another com team of computer programmers, which they was not supposed to do, All right? So notice that. Also notice, like, as he was moving through the movie, like his friend H, what was H on? H was, was all about building, right? H was in that building. He didn't even know that the iron robot that he was building would be needed at the end battle for them. He didn't know that. That goes to show you how, like, you do things in this reality and you don't even know what exactly they for, but the program always know what it's for. So although H might have felt like, hey, I'm building this because I want to build it. No, that was the program leading him to build that because it would be needed later on. Everything around us is programs, even down to fucking bullets. You know what I'm saying? Like, why do you think Neo was able to stop the bullets? He didn't just stop it with his hands. He was able to stop the bullets because he realized at the end of the Matrix, right? Which is another movie about how we live in a computer simulation. He realized that he could that he that he could rewrite the codes that everything was codes he's saying past the physical objects into their essence of what they really are which is nothing but computer generated codes so he simply just rewrote the codes with his mind and lowered the velocity of the bullets to zero so that's why when the bullets came he was able to stop them all right same thing in here when he went against the grain racing when H was in that building, the Iron um, Giant, he wasn't supposed to build it. That's why he told him, don't touch nothing. Nobody knew about it. They were going against, they were basically rewriting the codes, even down to the point why they wanted to win the game so they could rewrite the code. At the end of the game, what did they do? They run, they won, they got the egg, and what? 
rewrote the codes. All right, they they rewrote the codes. Now, what I also want you to pay attention to is like, look at how like in the movie nobody in the Oasis nobody knew who nobody really was. Like in the Oasis, you was one person, but in your real world nobody knew you, right? Because you weren't supposed to tell your identity. It's the same thing here. Remember, the real world in the movie represents the astral realms where we come from. In the astral realms, all of us recognize each other. It's just soul and spirit. We completely recognize each other. But when we come into planet Kai, or we go to other planets, galaxies, universes, paradigms, dimensions, multiverses, we don't initially recognize each other because we take on different avatars or we take on eight avatar. We're not in our pure essence. That's why they put that in the movie. You know what I'm saying? To show you that truth. And then notice how, although he was still in the Oasis, anything he experienced in the Oasis because he had that suit that connected him to it, he felt it in the in the real world or the astral realm, right? Notice how the owner, he said, hey, reality, you know what I'm saying, is needed sometimes. When the, when he won the game, what did he do? He only, he, he, gave, he set up days in the Oasis where nobody could access it. Nobody can access the program so that they can have more time to spend time in the real world. All right. That's how it's supposed to be. That's like we're supposed to spend more time in the astral realms, more time in our real reality. Right. But because this program has been hacked and it is being used, this is what like whole lockdown is about. It's being used to control us. Take the young doll situation, for example. Although I put the download out there and really broke down what was really going on. It's still deeper than that because that was a code that they wrote into the matrix. And what has happened? They're going to talk about it for weeks. It's draining everybody energy. People frequencies is lower thinking about it. And it's a it's a it's a it's a it's an international thing they doing on the planet. And they did it in November, same like they did last year with Mo 3 and King Bonner and them. But the reason they're doing it in November this year is because what's going on today? You got the you got the eclipse today. All right, and then you got the full one coming up December 4th. So you got the eclipse going on, and everybody, and they're gonna use everybody's low frequency to what? Power up their moon. Remember, moon ain't real. All right, and it weakens us, but strengthens them. So we already in low, but they can also use the channel out to, to, to harvest our frequency only if we low. So notice, they got everybody low with a lunar eclipse coming up. All right, that's a code they wrote into the matrix. It's a code they wrote into the matrix, right? For us to experience that, to lower the frequencies, you feel me? That's what they did in the movie. They've shown you that in the movie. Also notice, the system paid the, the funny dude with the skeleton stomach. He had all the little funny coats with the hoodie that was actually like chasing him. As well as the white, the white, the white, um, the white, well, the white, the, the human being, um, queen, the human being woman, both of them was chasing them the whole movie, right? And notice how they was able to find him. They knew exactly where he was at. They knew exactly where he was going. It was cameras everywhere in the Oasis. No matter where they went, they was able to, that's how it is in real life. It's been like that. Drones everywhere, cameras and everything. We have been watched, monitored, and tracked at an all-time high and censored. I mean, I mean, well, now censored, but being watched at an all-time high. This isn't nothing new. They've been doing this, right? But now we are awakening to it, so we are recognizing that because we vibrate on a higher frequency. You see what I'm saying? So this movie, Steven Spielberg, look who wrote the movie, Steven, Steven Spielberg. And if you get into who he is, you'll see that he was he's deep into the occult. He's high up in the in the in the in the Bill Burger group and stuff like that. And they gave him access to our ancient knowledge. This is why he was able to put certain movies out. So when Steven Spielberg put this movie out, he wrote this movie because this is what's really going on. Like I say, Ready Player One, Get Out, The Matrix, and They Live. That's all about the super reality of what we live in. This shit is simply a video game, and you and you go to sleep every night, like I said, and you leave the video game. You leave this oasis. You leave this reality. All right, and everything you experience because it's being this reality is being controlled by fallen angels. They they make you believe it's real and tell you that you was just dreaming, and now you back hearing that this is real. But that's 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 a lot. You feel me? That's a lot. Although Young Dolph transcended, let's use Dolph again because he just transcended. Although his soul just transcended, right? He can, he didn't know he don't know he 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 can't tell the difference between him when he was asleep or when he here. It's like because it's like one big dream because it's an alt it's a computer simulation of our real reality in the astros. So certain rules are shown to us that we really have in the astros. So that's why it feels real. You feel me? This this reality feels a lot realer than it really is. Think about it. You can create whatever you want in this reality. You can't do that in the astros. In the astros, everything is already set up to be what it is. You feel me? It's already a, a, a motion to it. 
but it's a, it's such a peaceful motion. You don't need to create shit. Everything is in perfect balance, though. So that's the difference. Whereas here, because this oasis, this program has been hijacked, right? You have to recreate positive energy because they put nothing. They 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 encoded nothing but negative frequencies and negative programs here. So you got we got to rewrite all the codes. All right. So. That's why I say Ready Player One, man, it's, it's very deep. It's funny, too. They had a lot of little funny things, and that's a very good good, good movie. But the reason it feels good to the soul is because it, it's, it's, it's real. It's, it's what we live in, you know, and, and, and people got to understand it. Even down to, I mean, they put so much, so much, so much in there. Like, for example, um, when she walked up on him and told him he needed a disguise, look how she did it. She had a disguise. He didn't even know that was her. You see what I'm saying? He didn't even recognize that was her because she came in like Goro off Mortal Kombat and then shifted her shape. It was her. All right. That's exact. That's an example of how. Yes, because she told him you're famous now. So everybody knew who he was. That's an example of how it is when you're waking up here. Once you wake up, you send off a code to the scoreboard. So they know who you are. So you do got to move different. You do got to kind of try to disguise your essence until we win the game. Now that they won the game in the Oasis, they ain't got to do that no more. You see what I'm saying? But when it was crooked people in power, they had to do that. Just like the um, the, the the whole team that the boss had that was trying to win the game, the bad guy, all that whole team represents fallen angels. All of them, like, like all of them take on shapes here, okay? So, like, all the fallen angels, they fallen angels in the astral realms. But guess what we call them here? Reptilians. They take on the shape of reptilians and Pleiadians. And these are the ones who run this so-called shadow government on down to the human being hierarchy. Same thing with us. We are gods and goddesses at, at, at our essence. When we come here, we take on different names. They try to tell us human beings or we say Atlanteans and all that. But we really gods and goddesses at our essence. So this Ready Player One was a was a very deep download about what we live in. It's actually a computer simulation. When we get off this live right now, y'all gonna y'all gonna leave the Oasis or this reality. You're gonna go right back to the real realm, the real astros. Every night you do it, just like in that. They just couldn't stand there all day. They had to eventually come out and go back to the real. That's why we go to sleep because this is a video game. This is a computer simulation. We gotta exit it. In the matrix, they once they once they was red pilled and woke up, they could not stay in there all day. They were going to do their mission. They gotta come back to Zion. Facts. So like movies like this is put in front of your face to show you the real world you live in. And then at the end, when you did get to the end, notice how everything was tested because they want to make sure that the oasis, that the reality was gonna go in the hands of the right individual. Check game. Even when he got to the end, did you peep the two dragons? How they were intersecting and they was at the top. It was in the, he, when he walked in that all gold room right before he signed. When he was gonna sign. Until he realized that ain't what was needed. Peep the two dragons connecting. That represents the Kundalini energy rising. And once it rises to the top and you crack through that crown chakra, you detach from the oasis, you win the game. You get the egg. The egg. You know what I'm saying? And it was all about at the end of him getting the egg so that he can get the key to the oasis, which is the code, so he can reprogram it. And that's what we're trying to do here. Reprogram the Matrix. It's been hijacked. And in the movie, the Matrix, it needed to be reprogrammed. That's what Matrix Reloaded was about. Neo job was to reload the program. He had the codes inside of him. The agents, all that, they were codes. Just computer-generated um, codes.